Thank you so much, Sophie, for this incredible performance. And now we welcome our eighth competitor, Frida, from the International School of Luxembourg, with her project titled, To what extent do the environmental factors of seawater temperature and depth affect the annual sea migration behavior of wild sea trout in the southeast Iceland? She conducted research based on experiment using online tagging data sources. In her work, she compares the trends between Iceland, Norway, and Denmark in order to arrive at a more accurate conclusion. Please join me in welcoming Frida to the stage. Good morning. And my name is Frida Thorsteinsdottir. So I conducted, conducted an experiment that's called to what extent do the environmental factors of seawater temperature and depth affect the migratory behavior of sea trout in the southeast of Iceland. So I'd like to start with a question. Did you know that sea trout led to the colonization of our rivers as, this, as the ice retreated 10,000 years ago? It is now recognized that sea trout are in trouble in many areas in the world. In some areas, scientists have identified specific problems such as the catastrophic effects of sea lice that derive from fish farming, as well as climate change and extensive farming. So this fish is known as the ice age fish and it has been subject to a lot of natural selection and evolution. Personally, I go fly fishing, that's catch and release every year in Iceland, and I've always been interested in knowing why they migrate to the, to the sea every year and come back to the exact same places in the same rivers. So ob observations that I've made from my research so far is that the global rising temperatures are causing um, the diversification of the fish in Iceland because the fish are traveling northwards to reach their optimal temperatures. The glaciers are also melting and are predicted to have completely melted by 100 to 200 years. These will change the abiotic factors that are in, I in the Icelandic environment. So here we can see um, two two images that show where I conducted my research. So on the right, we can see the, that I conducted it in the southeast of Iceland. With the red, you can see the peat bogs, beaches, and sand dunes, and the green shows the birch, woodlands, and sparse vegetation. The, the Vatnajökull is the glacier that, it, that is shown in the image and is the largest glacier in Europe. And the water that runs from the river is comes mainly from this glacier. So from the other image on the left, we can see that this area is the warmest in Iceland and also is subject to relatively high precipitation. So in my background information, I found that they are directly correlated with one another, with the amount of weight and the amount of food that is available. Iceland has unique glacial sediment and estuaries and predators, such as Arctic, terns, and mink. The fish will try to maintain a constant internal environment by changing their temperature and their depth. So they'll change, the, the temperature has an effect on their metabolic rate, their feeding habits, their energy balance, and their locomotor behavior. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so, large deviances in this temperature will eventually cause acclimation, and this is, for example, this is um, like changes in the metabolic enzymes in the fish. And this will also affect the rate of hatching, which in turn changes the metabolic, uh, the migratory behavior of the fish. The depth, they, the fish change their depth in order to reach a different salinity. Um, lunar and, and solar um, poles, as well as the feeding behaviors and avoidance of predators. These fish are very sensitive to water abstraction and pollution, land drainage, nutrient enrichment, and siltation, which comes from extensive farming and, um, and uh, forestry. These factors have caused extinction in many areas of the world. 
So for my methodology, methodology I use sources from um, online databases and um, professional work, as well as um, a cor correspondence with a marine biologist. These were all used, they all use data storage tags, which are surgically in place in the back of the fish. And these can uh, measure parameters such as depth, temperature, and number of days measured, as well as the GPS. So I conducted a theoretical based experiment and I found, um, I was able to make a graph that shows exactly the areas where the fish migrates into the sea and leaves, exits the sea and goes back into the rivers. So the blue is the temperature and the orange is the depth. And it illustrates how the, the trends act as they are moving um, further with the time. So from this, we can see that they are diving, having deeper dives near the end of their migration. The migratory period is between April and September, and the average migration to enter the sea is in the beginning of June, and the exit is in the beginning of August. So these comparisons are very important because from what the inf information I got from Iceland, it was um, the conclusions that I can, can make weren't as significant as if I would compare them to Norway and Denmark. So this is why I decided to compare them to these countries as well, because Denmark has um, a, a lot deeper, uh, shallower and warmer temperatures, and Norway has a lot deeper and colder temperatures, so Iceland is in between the, the two. Here we can see a visual representation of the, um, of the trends between the countries. So here we can see the, on the left, we can see the, the percentage of depth reached compared to the percentage of depth that they had the possibility to reach. And we can see that Iceland is in between the two, uh, the three. And here we can see the median temperature compared to the median temperature detected by the trout. So with this, I, I calculated the percentage difference of each in order to see the trends all together. And we can see that they all have a very similar migratory period. And um, that in Denmark, we can see that the high percentage difference is because of the, the um, shallow areas and warm temperatures. And the low um, percentage difference for Denmark is because of the, the deep, uh, no, the opposite, because of the deep um, depths and the warm temperatures. So from this, we can take that the fish are highly adapted to their environment. They, they go deeper at dusk and near the end of their migration. They perform vertical migrations since temperature and depth affect their suit food supply, buoyancy, their predator encounters. Um, this will cause the fish to vertically migrate and this will cause a more or less influence from these factors. So climate change is something that is very important when we look at this, um, this field because of the diversification in the area as well as comp this will result in competitive exclusion for the sea trout that are native to this environment. So to, like, to make an accurate conclusion, the, the temperature shows the increase in development and digestion, and the depth shows the, the change in brightness, energy conservation, food preferences. So, um, in total, the, this shows that, um, to evaluate my process, um, the sample sizes were very different, so this uh, creates a limitation. Um, however, it corresponds with the literature that I have found, and the timeline is only from 1996 to 2017, and this makes it difficult to make conclusions about the um, effect of climate change. So something that I would look further into in this uh, project would be to have a narrower temperature back or to have a longitudinal study, which would 
allow me to see the exact uh, effects of the climate change. Thank you very much. Hello, Frida. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Now, when you entered, you said that you were a little bit nervous before going on stage. How did it go? I think it went okay, but I was I was very nervous the whole time, so I think this might have affected like the way I felt. But I think I managed to say everything I wanted to say, so that was good. Well, we could see you a little bit on the screen, and it seemed that it went very, very well. Don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I was wondering, when I saw all these pictures in your presentation, um, where did the idea for the project come from? Um, so I always go fishing, fly fishing in Iceland um, every year. So I've always been like seeing these fish and wondering how they always come back to the same places and why they always migrate and what factors could change like the way that they do this. Very cool. Now, I don't think fly fishing is considered as a typical hobby for a teenager. <laughs> Where does this passion come from? Um, it's pretty common in Iceland and yeah. my parents do it a lot. So it's it's pretty um it's a pretty niche sport but it's very very fun so, to so do. it's considered sport it's not yeah. like uh, chilling <laughs> a hobby mm. yes okay. well it could be a hobby as well mm -hmm. <laughs> now do you have any other hobbies than fly fishing that you could turn maybe into a next project um i do dancing a lot oh, so nice. um i remember my sister for example did a math exploration on um the plié to get a perfect plié in ballet awesome. and I love that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that was very interesting so maybe something with like the aesthetics of it it's your first participation this year and yeah. you already made it to the top 10 league so <laughs> congratulations thank you um was it as you expected it to be I mean this contest and um I think it was more like high production than I expected and uh, everything is is really really nice to look at and all the pro projects are very interesting and yeah I just didn't expect it to be so so much effort put into it and it's really nice to see that. Mm -hmm. um, what is what was the most difficult part of your project while doing it? Um, for me, I had troubles um, finding data because it's all online. So I had to really search hard to find um, viable data that would allow me to see um, like the migratory um, behaviors. But also I had to make sure that I wasn't um, like uh, making like co confirmation or select selection bias from this. Of course, that's, um, that's a challenge a researcher faces. Now my question would be, do you plan on going a bit further with your project now? Let's assume you would have unlimited research, uh, resources. How would you take this project further? Um, I would definitely look at the effects that climate change has on the fish because um, it's, it's something that, is, that has to come into like, our attention today with like, the constant... Um, changes that are occurring and yeah very good and do you plan on doing maybe studies in the future in that field um, maybe not ecology I, I'm very interested in like biotechnology and things like that so I, I think I would be interested in also conducting projects in, in that field but this field is very interesting as well for me very good um, Is there any advice, as a newcomer, is there any advice you would give to also other newcomers next year's? Um, I would probably say just um, relax, because personally I wasn't very relaxed before going, but also just prepare your presentation a lot um, before. And I think those two are, are the main points that I'd have. Well, I think those are very good tips. Now, what actually pushed you to do this project for the first time? Um, so at school, uh, for my IB diploma, we had to write an extended essay. Um, so I, I uh, chose to write about biology, and I picked the sea trout in Iceland um, because uh, I've, I have such a close connection to it. Also, my dad's friend is a marine biologist who has a lot of data and research on the same topics. So as you took the IEB, this means this is your last year in hi high school? Yes. What you're going to do next year? Um, I've, 
I'm currently applying to different universities and I'm looking at um, uh, subjects and courses like biotechnology, biomedical engineering or biomedicine and things like that. Yeah. And what would you, what would be your first choice? No. Um, it depends kind of on what I'm good at. So I think maybe biotechnology. Mm. Yeah. And do you want to go do that in Iceland or somewhere else? Um, I'm looking at mostly just countries around Europe and um, Netherlands, Ireland, um, also like warmer places, <laughs> <laughs> or also Scandinavia and Iceland, yeah. Very good. Well, we wish you the best of luck for that, and thank you for being here, and congratulations thank so again. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thanks. Thank you.